Think you're a 70s fan. Okay, Ponch, can you dig this? I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> it's I Love the 70s, and this is 1979. The flicks, the fashions, the fads, the TV. Thank you very much. The tunes, a totally groovy year that gave us these burning questions. Was the real estate market really that tough in Three's Company Land? It's tough to find a place to live. I'll pretend I'm gay. How can anybody play football with all that jiggling going on? They could score a touchdown on me anytime. What was the true spirit of YMCA? Six very fit men singing about having sex at the Young Man's Christian Association. The answers to those questions, plus one wild and crazy guy. I was born a poor black child. And the best song about rainbows ever. Because you love the 70s. Because you've still got those slutty candies heels in your closet, admit it. This is 1979. Oh, yeah. Right on. Can you dig it? I love the 70s. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Chips was one of the worst television shows of the 70s, without a doubt. If you watched Chips, you were way not cool. Chips, uh, two hot L.A. cops on bikes who uh, saved the day all the time. All right, get out of here. Come on, put your hands on your head. They just catch criminals, meet beautiful women, and still find time to roller boogie. Eric Estrada, like the, the only actor ever that could show all 32 teeth while he was crying. Why would I do that? And then there was a very large white man named Larry Wilcox. And roll 11, 41, 11, 42, Harbor Lane and Commerce. There's a Smokey on I-35. <laughs> I watched Chips. I knew what the lingo was. I thought Eric Estrada was cute. Loved Eric Estrada. And the other guy, not so much. <laughs> I was exposed to a lot of women. Ponch seemed a little more rough, which was cool. You know, a little more street. The outfits that they wore, I think, were a little snug for real cops. I had it <clears throat> tailored in a lot of places. I had the crotch brought up. Ponch had more than the weapons on his, on his, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Good guys don't win every round, all right? some newsflash. Let me just tell you something about chips. They're not that nice and, uh, and none of them are Latino. Ah, shoot. I love it. Even though he was Latino, they made him Italian. Right, like right, he was Poncherello. The one thing chips did better than anybody was end on a freeze frame. Every episode ended with Ponch or John doing this. Someone would tell a joke at one of their expenses and then they'd freeze. And they go, dun, 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 dun. And then they cut to the other one going. Showing that in the world of the California Highway Patrol, everything always ends up just right. I love 79. Warriors. Killer movie. Great movie. Love it. Own it. DVD. VHS. The Warriors is... West Side Story for heterosexuals. Gangs from all the boroughs come together. The Warriors did it! And instead of singing and dancing, decide to actually rumble. They had to get back home. And everybody was out to kill them. So they were in the subways, they were up, they were down. It was like, get back to your home. Turf. You see what you get, warriors! You see what you get when you mess with the orphans! The gangs themselves were, were so funny. Some of them dressed in makeup. The village people were far more scary than the gangs in that movie. Dressed as a baseball fury many times on Halloween. I'll shove that bat up your ass and turn you into a popsicle. Although the riffs were my favorite gang just because they were the most mysterious. They were everywhere. Riffs! Yeah! I remember the one. There was one gang that was on the roller skates. The Lizzies, tough chicks, gang, all girls. Shit! The chicks are packed. The chicks are packed. Ah, they get wiped out by the chicks. 
there was a DJ, and you only saw her, her mouth, and she would sort of give them a play-by-play. -play. Our friends are on second base and trying to make it all the way home. You warriors better watch out trying to get over to the east side. Remember the guy at the very end with the bottles and making the sound, clinking them together? Warriors, come, come out, out to play. play. Warriors, come out and play. Man, that dude's up. I love percussion instruments. It's my favorite section of any band. So, to me, this is even a bigger thrill than playing the triangle. You warriors are good. I thought you warriors were but you're good. Real good. The best. Savage. Big thing in the 70s with pop rocks. I love pop rocks. Oh, yes. Oh, God, this is great. Where did you get this? I get this in, in my hand now, and I find this uncontrollable need to start pouring this in my mouth. My mouth is already watering at the prospect. My glands are going crazy. So keep on rocking me, baby. Pop rocks have to be horrible for you. Oh, yeah. me, baby. Listen to them hum. Keep on rocking me, baby. What's making them fit? What is that? Keep on rocking me, baby. It's some horrible combination of chemicals that's delicious. I remember the urban legend, they say Mikey from the uh, Life Cereal commercials. Knocked back like three Pop Rock packets and then a couple of Cokes. And his stomach exploded. Died on the spot. OD off the Pop Rocks. It was the big dare to see who could handle Coca-Cola and Pop Rocks at the same time. Screw it. And throw the whole thing in. After you swallow them, they're still popping and down your throat. And it's really, that's when you get frightened that you're about to die. I'm okay. I'm glad the pop rock craze is over. That was a really dangerous time. Thank you for this experience. It's been too long. Eight track classic. Gosh, I love that song. First I was afraid. Dramatic. I was, I was petrified. Just thinking I could never live without you by my side. But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong. But I grew strong. And I learned how to get along. And now you're back. Then he tried to come back. Oh, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We sang it like we knew it, like we had lived the hurt. I felt it so much was about my life between the ages of 12 and 14. And we didn't even have bras yet, you know? But we felt it and we knew it and we just knew that if it ever happened to us, we were gonna be strong, you know, and we'd get along, you know? There I was at Studio 54. I couldn't get anybody I wanted, you know? I mean, I, I was just chasing after all these gay guys who were leaving with the bartenders and I was out, you know, go on now, go, I don't need you, whatever you are. Go out now, go. Walk out the door. You knew where you were when that song came out. You knew what you were doing, and you knew who you were doing it with. I will survive. Oh, glory. I will right on. This is the end. I remember seeing Apocalypse Now the day it opened in New York City at a midnight show. We went the first day, the first show at the Ziegfeld Theater. Apocalypse Now managed to make the memory of Vietnam seemed even worse than it already did. Apocalypse Now was one of those movies you had to go see, and you left partially disturbed, partially scratching your head. It took me years to understand what was really going on in that film. What the hell was Marlon Brando doing in that forest? I always liked Brando, even when he was being insane. The scene where, where the cow is slaughtered and Marlon Brando is slaughtered, it's a confusing scene because you keep forgetting. It just seems like two cows being slaughtered. Smell of napalm in the morning. Nothing like the smell of napalm in the morning. The smell of napalm in the morning smells like victory. I don't like the smell of napalm. I prefer musk. You want to serve, soldier? Yes, sir. Robert Duvall is the guy who wanted to bomb certain places because the surf was great. That's good, son, because you're either surf or fight. Lance. 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 He's out there and bombs are going off. He's telling the dudes to go surf. Look at that break. Breaks left and right. <laughs> I just took this beach so you can surf. Man, the kid's got a reputation. You can't expect him to surf those sloppy waves. I understand what you're yeah, saying. I'm an artist, Bill. That was uh, entertaining, but I think dangerous. Robert Duvall's character is all about work hard, play hard. A little 
little napalm, a little surfing. Life is all about balance. I love 79. Coming up, fighting aliens in your underpants. Here's a movie about drama and action and what is the most memorable part? Sigourney Weaver and her panties. Plus the most important application of slime. <laughs> you can make it fart. <laughs> and you want this man driving your calf. Reverend Jim, come on. Classic stoner. Next on I Love 1979. But first, the Roller Rink Anthem of 1979. Leif Garrett here. Slip into that tube top and lace up those skates. It's time for the Roller Rink Anthem of 1979. We are family by Sister Sledge. The Roller Rink Anthem of 1979. Yeah, forget it. Boxing ladies of 79. Eric Estrada here, sending out an APB for the Foxiest Ladies of 1979. Do you copy? Yeah. Aaron Gray, 25th Century Fox. Uh -huh. yeah. Bed Misler, she didn't look so foxy in the rose. But okay, okay, we'll give it to her. And Sally Field, Foxy Oscar Lady. It's true, I like her. I really, really like her. That's a big 10 for the Foxy Ladies of 1979. And yes, they can call me Ponch any day. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Alien is the coolest sci fi movie of all time. Alien was great. You know, fantastic haunted house and space movie. <laughs> actually started because the thing wrapped his slimy tentacles around the guy's face. Never in my wildest dreams thought that the next thing was going to happen was a freaking alien was going to pop out of his gut. I just really don't want anything popping out of my stomach like that going... <laughs> there it was. Skittering across the floor. Should have killed it. Should have gotten it right there. Memorable moments was when the robot guy exploded, and he had what looked like milk coming out of his mouth. And they asked, what can be done about it? Uh, nothing can be done about it. You're It's Sigourney Weaver, of course, you have, like, serious female action hero right there. She's rocking. Sigourney Weaver is, like, hot on nine different levels. She would definitely be the dominator. I'm senior officer. What's the favorite part in the movie? Sigourney Weaver when she takes off her spacesuit. Sigourney Weaver in her underwear would be my favorite scene in the film. Very vulnerable when you're in your underpants. You don't want to confront an alien in your underpants. Here's a movie about drama and action and the confrontation of good and evil. And what is the most memorable part? Sigourney Weaver in her panties. I love 79. This stuff stinks. What is slime? Who knows? It's just slime. You know, it's funny about the whole slime phenomenon. When you grow up in the swamp, you, you get a taste of that real early, and I do mean a taste. It's a very pretty green. There was slime with eyeballs, and there was slime with worms in it. I love it. Aww. It's amazing. It came in that little jar, and you used to just push down on it and make this good farting sound. <laughs> you can make it fart. <laughs> Oh, oh! You'd just be like, you want to feel what a booger feels like? I do! Oh, God, can someone have a tissue? It's about to go. It's about. The worst thing about slime is you get, like, carpet particles in there and stuff, and it got pretty gross. See, I would get mad at my sisters. I was like, oh my God, you totally got lint in my slime. Now I have to get another garbage can. I'd like to put it back in its cage. Ah. Oh. Taxi was the, the best ensemble sitcom ever made. Everybody loved the show Taxi, I think. Except for probably taxi drivers who were like, oh, it's not like that. Alex was Judd Hirsch. He was the center, the focus, kind of the normal guy. Me? I'm a cab driver. 
<laughs> I'm the only cab driver in this place. A little Danny the Beetle with the dispatcher. When Louie first comes out of his cage and we see that he's like four foot six, it was just so tremendous. We don't let cabs out no more. I remember thinking, Wow, Danny DeVito might be the smallest person I've ever seen in my life. I get the picture. And Mary Lou Henner was fantastic. What else is new? Elaine was totally hot. Yeah, she got that meter running. I remember Andy Kaufman. Andy was latka. Give me a minute when I go to the can. How can you not love Andy Kaufman? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, Tony Danza played Tony because if he's called by another name, gets a little confused. They don't give you a look like that. I could ask a question. I remember Jeff Conaway, who like, you know, we were all dying over from Greece. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he had that great, like, Farrah Fawcett hair in those days. You know, he looked so handsome. Jeff, no! Reverend Jim, come on classic stoner oh yeah my favorite episode was when he was taking his driver's license exam and he turns and he goes what does a yellow light mean and he tells him slow down okay what does yellow light mean i never laughed as much as with jim Whoa. Christopher Lloyd's character made us all feel a lot safer about getting into random New York taxis. Yeah, turkey. Pittsburgh Steelers are the greatest team of all time. The Steelers won the Super Bowl in 79. The Steelers, with the terrible towels, they would wave these towels. Well, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, the steel curtain. That's what they were called back then. The steel curtain, just everything about them, the look, the players, it wasn't nothing fake about them. Dallas was, oh, America's team, pretty boys. Pittsburgh Steelers was from the gutter, from the depths of the earth. Those guys were a team. You know what I'm saying? Those guys, they knew how to play the game. They played well. They won four Super Bowls. I thought it was the greatest team ever. Everybody on that team was incredible. The Pittsburgh Pirates, you know, Willie Stargell, uh, We Are Family. Uh, they won the World Series that year. We are Their big theme song at the time was uh, We Are Family. And I got all my sisters and me. It was a very sensitive lyric. But like to start off a baseball game, you had Sister Sledge come out and sing like We Are Family. That song was a real, like a feel-good kind of song. It was great. For some reason, that song became their theme song because the team would sing it, and it just turned Pittsburgh into one big gay disco. I was like, hey, go Pirates, you know, so it was cool. That must have been crazy in Pittsburgh because in 79, everyone was unemployed, too. Well, at least they can watch some of these games. 79 was the last year Pittsburgh existed, but they went out with a bang. They won the World Series and the Super Bowl, and then they disassociated themselves and don't exist anymore. Which is a good call. A lot of other cities should do that. Cleveland, when they win a championship, I believe, will do the same thing. I love 79. Macho men of 79. When you're a 10, you know a thing or two about men. Macho baby. Bo Derek here with the Macho Man of 1979. Ted Nugent, Wango Tango Macho Man. Sting, Roxanne's Macho Man. And finally, my perfect 10, the Muy Macho Dudley Moore. Macho, macho, macho man. I love the 70s. I love the 70s. Ten was about a man in his 40s, played by Dudley Moore, you know, going through midlife crisis. Yeah, I've... Dudley Moore being in Ten, right then and there, you know it's a movie, it's not real life. Oh. She, in real life, would not be with him. I remember Dudley Moore trying to be cool on the beach and running. It was too hot and he was trying to get to the towel. If you like pina coladas. She was beautiful from head to toe. And, and, you know, that's coming from a guy like me who's not even a mammal. Uh, if you know what I mean. It's every man's fantasy. I think more guys stay home and play pocket pool or squeeze the weasel. Uh, forget about Bo Derek than any film up to that point. I think that's right about when I hit puberty and uh, lost my virginity to myself. 
on the couch to Bo Derek. And that stays with you. I remember thinking, I'm too young to have these dirty thoughts. And I put my pants on and I left the theater. I remember thinking Bo Derek with cornrows, uh, very hot. Wow. Everybody in Miami started putting their hair in cornrows like Bo Derek. And that looks really bad on an overweight Jewish girl. White girl with cornrows? Oh, my goodness. Come on, that ain't right. Bo stole it from the sisters. And Bo should, Bo. Now, come on. Come out, make a statement, some. Tell people that you got it from the sisters. Yes, actually, Stuart, I did steal it from the sisters. Did you ever do it to Ravel's Bolero? Mm -hmm. Oh. I love the scene where they finally have sex. It's better if I'm on top. Oh. Okay. And when the record starts to skip. Oh. Oh. It's stuck. It's not. It's not. Really, don't be afraid. <laughs> the record is stuck. That was the song. That was the music you listened to. When you want to play a rousy game of hide the bacon and shoot the sherbet. Oh. <laughs> I'd have sex to Bolero. I mean, it would have to be the right recording of it. Ah! Oh, my hat! My hat! Oh. Dudley, I heard the rumors that he, he had little hand signals if he needed to get away or needed a break, because who knows why. It's a guy thing. I love 79. So Summer 1979. I love Donna Summer. Donna Summer. Fantastic. She wore tight pants. Yeah, she was pretty fine. The queen of disco, Donna Summer. Last dance. Last dance. Last chance. Come on. Donna had the hair, the skin, the look. She always had these beautiful long flowing wigs. She also had afros sometimes too. She was beautiful. So no matter what she put on, you know, you still focused on her face. I want some hot stuff, baby, this evening. Yeah, baby, bring it on. Where are you, girl? I'm looking for you. You hear? The songs, they were so fresh and so brassy. And, oh, I loved them. I just call it blue-collar party music. That's what I call down the summer's music. Bad girls, mm -hmm. talking about the sad girls. Bad girls about hookers, right? Well, as a little kid, I had no idea. I'm like, oh, she's a bad girl. We thought we were bad at home by nine, but we were bad. <laughs> toot toot. Hey, beep beep. You couldn't say nice girls or church girls. We're we'll talking about bad girls. Donna Summer, she was she was very special. She released something in us. Candy shoes were great. I do remember candy shoes very well. I had lots. They really hurt. <laughs> Well, they were sort of Amish, and yet they weren't. They were kind of folksy, clog-like shoes that girls wore. And then they had a little wooden platform, a little wooden heel, and then colors. And uh, so they kind of looked like candy. I never had them. But I wasn't cool enough. I wasn't allowed to wear them. I always wanted to wear those shoes. Candy shoes were the first sexy thing I was ever allowed to wear. But you know, the dirt that got in between your toes, you just couldn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think the wooden soles were deemed bad for the feet. All of my sisters had candies. And my sister just had bunion surgery, probably due in part to the candies. You, know, you had to like kind of walk on your tiptoes, but you, you had a good... They were absolutely the pinnacle of little girls wanting to be big girls. Candies represent the apotheosis of the slut. Um... You had to have some candies. If you didn't have candies, don't come outside. <laughs> and I learned, I think, from then on, that as long as their shoes were hot, the rest of you would be okay. I love 79. I've always been a big fan of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. They were kind of like the girls gone wild of like the 70s. They were like the first hot cheerleaders. Oh, no. They could score a touchdown on me anytime. When the Cowboys came to town to play, it was like, okay, I'm really gonna watch the game now. 
a lot of guys like sports, but people really like sports with half-naked women on it. Yeah, who cares about the team? It's all about the cheerleaders. They have little cheerleader cards that you could get. I don't know where. I had the trading cards. You knew them by name. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, I love their their outfits. They were just great. They had them, 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 them hot pants. Hot pants with their nice little cowgirl boots. Men love the white boots. And their, their nice little uh, white vest that, you know, would just go like that. The stars on their... Uh, stars. <laughs> Chippendale dancers to me were like hard body, oh. lots of baby oil. They were sexy. They were hunky. I remember them looking like greasy pool guys. There were men with long hair and thongs on. There was just boys taking off their clothes. Gross. I mean, Chippendale, it's not even like a sexy name. It's the name of two chipmunks. The Chippendales showed once and for all that you do not need to wear a shirt to wear a bow tie. I loved those outfits. Bow ties, cuffs, black poly pants. They wore the black tuxedo pants, but they were rip away and you just went shoot. It was a fashion choice. They would dance and they would show their dongs to squealing women. Everybody was going crazy. Francisco. If you're a guy and you want to get laid, go to Chippendales because there's about 300 screaming, horny girls that'll do anything. I think it's a great way for women to get together and hoot and holler and pretend that they're guys. It was also cool for the women. Hey, the husband's like at a strip club. Why can't we go to a strip club? Shake it, shake it. I love 79. Coming up, the jerk that stole your heart. I think any movie that starts with a white guy saying, I was born a poor black child. It's great. The original Dumb and Dumber. Plus, the big bug-eyed comedy of Mr. Furley. That was a bad time for Don Knotts. He needed a little more subtlety. And one courageous caveman. Caveman. Yeah, I remember Captain Caveman used to get real amped and just clear everything out. Next on I Love 1979. But first, remember this? Mr. Green? Yeah. You need any help? Mm-mm. Want my Coke? No, no. Really? You can have it. Okay. Thanks. That's the way it should be. I like to see you around the whole world. Smiling with me. Coke the Coke. of 79. I'm Linda Carter. And these are the wonders of 1979. All the world is waiting for you. Relationships between men and women were forever changed with the birth of ESPN. Sun worshippers began running themselves in tanning beds and Sun Kiss Soda was born. I'm still mad about ESPN. I love the 70s. I'm a knock on the door. I'm a knock on the door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Where the kisses are hers and hers and his feet's company, too. I love the 70s company. Classic sitcom premise. Three of you live here together? It's tough to find a place to live. I'll pretend I'm gay. I love Jack Tripper. I mean, he was always tripping over everything. And the women were just horrible actors. Everybody was a bad actor. One of them was blonde and had enormous chests. Uh, Chrissy? That, that, this is fun. It that, certainly that, that, is. That. Suzanne Summers was hot. Oh, Chrissy, you jump better than anybody I know. Chrissy always had on the shortest shorts you've ever seen in your life. Well, what's wrong with that? 
There was another one with dark hair, and no one knew why she was there. Janet, was that her name? Janet? Poor Janet. Poor, poor Janet. Joyce Stewart never gets any love. Did she ever do anything after that show? Oh, I think we've seen enough already. <laughs> I mean, who can forget Joyce Stewart's subsequent work in Three's Company Reunion, in uh, the E! story about Three's Company? Their landlords were uh, Mr. and Mrs. Roper. I love Mr. Roper, who was withholding sex from his wife. There's an energy shortage. How can I forget? You remind me every night. <laughs> and then there was poor Mrs. Roper, who was always in the moo-moos. She was brilliant. I wanted to steal her wardrobe. And they had um, Don Knotts. Name's Ralph Furley, bachelor at large. <laughs> that was a bad time for Don Knotts. Need a little more subtlety. <laughs> Every movie or every TV show he ever did, he played the same fumbling, bubbling character, didn't he? There's nothing you can show me that I can't handle. <laughs> My favorite episode is definitely the one with the whole misunderstanding. It was always miscommunications, and then it was always resolved at the Regal Beagle. You gotta love that. Don't stop. <laughs> right on. I am not a bum. I'm a jerk. The jerk was so funny. We saw it at a drive-in, and we were just crying. So funny. Oh, my God. That is the best, the best movie. That's right. I think any movie that starts with a white guy saying, I was born a poor black child. It's great. The original Dumb and Dumber. Steve could make anything funny. He had the gift. He and still does. Yes. The jerk is uh, about a, a down-and-out guy named Naven Johnson. His name was what? Johnson! Naven! R! Naven Johnson, raised as a poor black child. Grandma! And he doesn't realize that he's different from the rest of his family, even though he's white and the rest of them are black. You mean I'm going to stay this color? He finally comes a time where he's got to get out on his own and become his own man. He was set off to find his fortune. St. Louis? No, Naven Johnson. He can find his special purpose. What's happening to my special purpose? <laughs> well, when I was a kid, my mom told me that was my special purpose. He has a series of misadventures, including finding a dog named <laughs> Head. Not you, <laughs> Head. Where's Marie? Dog named <laughs> Head. Great. <laughs> he ends up inventing this thing for this guy who passed through a gas station where he works inventing the OptiGrab. OptiGrab? Yeah, we call it OptiGrab. And becoming a very rich man. First they didn't have the bamboo umbrellas for the wine, and now snails on the food. And then losing everything. I don't need one other thing except my dog. They call it the jerk, not because Steve Martin's a buffoon, but because of what it does right here. It jerks up tears. It's a tear jerker. I love 79. Jimmy Carter was on a trip to Georgia. It was in a canoe or something, and a uh, killer rabbit tried to attack him. There's such a thing as a killer rabbit? A rabbit came swimming towards him. He later claimed that the rabbit was aggressive and was attacking him, so he beat it away with his oar and received a lot of criticism. Did he kill it? Did they show any scratch marks on the canoe? Couldn't have killed it. If he, if he killed it, they would have, you know, probably impeached him. Attacked by a rabbit? Nobody gets attacked by a rabbit. First of all, first of all, let's get it right, okay? Rabbits don't swim. Rabbits swim. And that one was swimming without any difficulty at all. <laughs> I can certify to that. Nobody gets attacked by a rabbit ever except for a head of lettuce. Or maybe with a rabbit that had rabies. Give me something other than a rabbit. Oh, say, a lion. An alligator, come up with that. I think the reason it hurt Carter was Americans saw him dealing more aggressively with a rabbit than he was with the hostage takers in Iran. Poor Jimmy Carter, everything went wrong during his presidency. What's sad is, is that was like, uh, that was one of his better moments. The killer rabbit. Eight-track classic. I love the band. Bad, bad, bad. I actually thought My Sharona was a great song. When My Sharona came out, this was the song that the entire music industry rallied around. Uh, because it was right after that whole Disco Sucks thing. I'm a, I'm a, my Sharona. I remember the knack in that song and just being bombarded by that song. 
That was a hot song. Okay, I was in love with my cousin. Oh my God, he's gonna find out. Well, he knew, whatever. And I remember one summer vacation, he was walking around singing it like, Ooh, my little pretty one, my pretty one. When you're gonna give me some time, and he'd like kind of tease us all and like show off his muscles and be like, yeah, my little pretty one. My that was like a personal favorite after that. Set free by the Teen Angels from his prehistoric block of glacier ice comes the world's first superhero. Captain In the Teen Angels. Yeah, I remember Captain Caveman used to get real amped and just clear everything out. Scary cat. Teen Angels were his, yeah. His, his hot little numbers. Cavey, wavy. Did he ever get freaky with the teenagers? That's what I'd like to know. He sucked up for romance. Captain Caveman was corny. <laughs> the furry little guy with the club who couldn't talk English. Oh, I want me checking here for news. Yeah, he spit a lot. He had a lisp. <laughs> I have no idea what he was. Was he a person? Was he an animal? <laughs> half man, half woolly mammoth. <laughs> I never knew what any of the plot lines were about. I just knew that they set it up so he could pull something bizarre out of his <laughs> bulk. He'd pull out like a bat. Never a comb. Me need crash diet. He could hide you and hide the whole city in there, too. <laughs> he would fly for, and then all of a sudden someone would go... <laughs> And then you end up crashing. Uh oh, energy crisis. Actually, Captain Caveman used to be so clumsy. He get bum rap. He would try to save the day and just end up ruining stuff. But I guess it all worked out at the end of the day. Booga booga, me got him this time. I love '79. Coming up. Can Kermit still make the rainbow connection? I love that song, but it's very hard to sing when it's a fake rainbow. And young man, there's a place you can go. I know they had a swimming pool, but I would not dare go into the locker. Check in to the YMCA next on I Love 1979. But first, the follicle fat of 1979. Hi, I'm Isaac Hayes with your follicle fat of 1979. Oh, yeah. The mustache, the Fu Manchu, worn by the village people and other folks living rather colorful lifestyles. YMCA, who knows more about hair than me? Bella says the primate of 79 is... Real fan of the village people. The six members of the village people. You had a policeman, a fireman. There's no fireman. There was a plumber. There was some other butch profession. There was the the leather clad sort of biker pre Magnum PI kind of guy. Handlebar mustache. Oh, that leather man. He was so hairy. His mustache covered about 90% of his face. Leather, men in leather, fantastic. Hey, 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 hey. Macho, macho man. Village people, were they gay? Nobody knew that these guys were flaming gay. No one could, so for some reason, figure this out at the time. I didn't know those guys were gay. I didn't even know what gay was. Come on, people. You didn't get it? I think I felt good knowing I had a poster of five gay guys on my bed. We were very, very secure with our masculinity as a culture back then, I think. <laughs> there was a meaning to the uh, YMCA song. Six very fit men singing about having sex at the Young Man's Christian Association. America naively thought they were just a bunch of guys singing about the YMCA. <laughs> you can get yourself clean where all the boys hang out. I never went back to the YMCA. That changed my whole life. Hey, they must have done wonders for the YMCA. <laughs> 
I know they had a swimming pool, but I would not dare go into the locker. Obviously, it means something else. So. <laughs> They had great songs. It was fun. We would sing along, and they had those costumes. Ow! The village people had a profound effect on society. The village people were just a very garish ending to uh, a potentially garish decade. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first screening of the Muppet movie. The Muppet movie was uh, mostly a true story of, of how I met all my Muppet friends and we came to Hollywood to try to become rich and famous. You know, I hear this movie is dynamite. I like that I got two solid hours of Muppets because whenever the Muppet show would end, I would just be sad until the next one came on. The only parts that weren't true was the stuff we made up. Best movie, still probably in my top five films ever. You know, Rainbow Connection. That was a good song. That's a sad song. There's, There's so, so many, many songs about rainbows, rainbows. And, and what's on, on the other, other side. Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. Rainbows have nothing to hide. Someday we'll find it. The Rainbow Connection. The lovers, the dreamers, the me. <laughs> I love that song, but it's very hard to sing when it's a fake rainbow. That's actually what turned me on to wanting to write songs and sing songs. That's what the 70s is really about, the rainbow connection. I love 79.